Police officers save lives when they do, without any doubt, they're heroes. But police officers could also potentially ruin lives, many times not intentionally and not through faults of their own. But still, innocent people have been arrested, charged, prosecuted, convicted, sentenced, and even potentially executed. See deathpenaltyinfo.org for related information and statistics on that topic. Police officers do have a dangerous and important job, and to be able to properly do their job, they are given extraordinary power by the state. And we, as law-abiding citizens, need police officers to do their job right. But at the same time, we also need to protect ourselves from police officers because they have so much power at their disposal. This video is based primarily on two books about citizen police encounters. One is called "You Have the Right to Remain Innocent" by James Joanne. The other is "Arrest Proof Yourself" by Dale Carson and Vess Denham. Carson, who is a former police officer and a former FBI agent, writes this about the police in his book, and I quote: "To know them is to avoid them. To stay free, you've got to avoid them like the plague." This is on page 50 of his book. So why should we avoid the police like the plague? Well, here are seven reasons. Reason number one: No one is that innocent. One of the most common critical comments people left on my previous videos regarding citizen police encounters is that if you have done nothing wrong, then you've got nothing to fear. So this notion, if you're innocent, you got nothing to fear from the police, is actually rather misguided, because nobody is 100% innocent. There are countless laws in the criminal code that ordinary citizens simply do not know about at all. So how can anyone say ever that they have done absolutely nothing illegal? In fact, by expert estimation, an average American citizen is committing three felonies per day without themselves even knowing. It is well reported that overcriminalization has made us a nation of felons. So don't believe the hype that if you're innocent, you got nothing to fear, because you are not that innocent in the eyes of the law. Now, of course, overcriminalization as a general societal and legal problem is not the fault of any particular police officer, but it is a very important reason why we must be highly cautious regarding any potential interactions with police officers. Reason number two: One has a lot to lose just by being arrested. This is something that Carson emphasized on in his book. Even if you did nothing wrong and you were arrested by mistake by the police, meaning no charges were ever brought against you, you were not prosecuted, convicted, nor sentenced. But just having an arrest record is potentially a life sentence, a life sentence of shame, lost opportunities, and underemployment. A reasonable person would ask, "Look, if I was arrested by mistake and the arrest did not lead to any conviction, isn't this arrest record expunged?" Well, according to Carson, in many jurisdictions, arrest records not leading to convictions are not fully expunged. There would still be a record. Plus, the HR departments of many potential employers do not distinguish between arrests leading to convictions and arrests not leading to convictions. In the minds of many HR departments, an arrest record is an arrest record, which means if you've got one, regardless whether this arrest led to convictions or not, there may be many sectors or industries or organizations that you will not be able to get into ever, because after all, we're living in a world where everything is recorded and nothing is ever forgotten. So avoid unnecessary citizen police encounters to lower these unnecessary risks. Reason number three: to serve and to protect, or other priorities. Well, without getting into the complex question of what is really the fundamental purpose of policing, let's simply consider this question, and this is a question that Carson poses in his book: How likely is it that a police officer would start his day by getting into his cruiser and asking himself, "How can I serve the people in this neighborhood today? How can I contribute to the well-being of these local residents today? How can I ensure that traffic will flow as smoothly as possible today?" Now, do you think these are the type of questions that a police officer would ask himself in the morning before his working day starts? According to Carson, it is far more likely that the police officers would be asking themselves, "How can I make more felony arrests today? How can I issue more fines today? How can I make a high-profile bust in order to advance my career today?" Police officers are evaluated and promoted primarily, if not exclusively, on the basis of number of felony arrests made. 
As a result, police officers are predators. They're hunters, and you may very well be their prey. So do your best to stay out of their way. Reason number four: If a police officer wants to arrest you, chances are they will be able to. In his book, Carson talks about how on boring and slow days, police officers create their own excitement by finding people to arrest. And in the famous YouTube video by Professor Duran, his guest, a police officer, talks about how, as a patrol officer, he could choose to follow any car, and eventually the driver of that car will do something illegal, which gives him a legitimate reason to justifiably pull that person over. I mean, think about it. If you are driving down the road and a police car follows you, they can pull you over for driving too fast or too slowly, for forgetting to indicate when changing lanes, for hanging an air freshener too large on the rearview mirror, for a suspicion of not having sufficient tire tread depth, for a loud muffler, for failing to completely stop at a stop sign, for running a yellow light, and for a million other things. Those are all potential reasons, legitimate reasons, for the police officer to pull you over. And then the police officer may very well consider using one of their many inciters to manipulate the situation and get you arrested. And this brings us to reason number five: police officers can use inciters to trigger and provoke you in order to arrest you. Carson discusses a list of common inciters used by police officers to trigger an arrest. I'll highlight a few here. These inciters are tricks that police officers use in order to get a suspect angry and emotional, so that they cannot think or behave rationally, thereby making them more arrestable. For instance, a common inciter is that the police officer would intentionally whisper provocative and insulting remarks in order to trigger you to lose your temper. In order to trigger your rage, or they might use the in-your-face scream-out insider, which means the police officer would get very close to your face and talk very loudly and very aggressively. This is, of course, a very ill-mannered and irritating way to talk to someone. Now, if you, in return, raise your hand to cover your face, or worse, if you were to try to push the police officer away from you, that would be resisting an arrest or even assaulting a police officer. That's how the use of insiders can easily escalate a simple citizen police encounter into a felony arrest. For more of these insiders, check out Chapter 11 of the Carson book. Reason number six: sovereign immunity, meaning it is very difficult for an ordinary citizen to sue a police officer personally for something that they did wrong while on duty. Generally speaking, if one is mistreated by a police officer, one may sue the police department or the city, but not that individual police officer personally, as long as he or she is determined to have been operating within the general scope of his or her employment. In other words, as long as the police officer was on duty and doing his or her job and did not get too far out of line, it is very hard to sue them personally. This immunity shields police officers from worrying about getting sued, which is of course important for any police officer to be able to do their job. A police officer probably can't do their job if they have to constantly worry about if they will get sued personally for every little thing they do. So sovereign immunity is important and in many ways justified. But what this means for a regular law-abiding citizen is that we should avoid unnecessary interactions with the police because we have rather little at our disposal to target a police officer personally through lawsuits, even when we're mistreated. Now, as a side note, there have been cases where police officers were successfully sued by citizens, like the famous Ronnie King case. But cases like that are relatively rare, and they would usually have to involve very serious police misconduct, and there would have to be clear evidence, like videotape. If you are, let's say, mildly mistreated by the police and you don't have a videotape of it, say a police officer used unethical inciters on you during a citizen police encounter, which caused you to suffer from shame, humiliation, and stress, now do you think you'd be able to sue that specific police officer for that? That's probably going to be quite difficult because of sovereign immunity. Okay, reason number seven. Unfair, unjust, or negative citizen police encounters harm both the citizens and the police, but on the whole, they harm the citizens more. Look, even regular and normal citizen police encounters present unique psychological and physical challenges to the citizen due to the substantial power imbalance between a citizen and a police officer, and that's in normal cases. 
So, in the case where such an encounter is perceived by the citizen to be unfair and unjust, such encounters are likely to result in inconvenience, shame, humiliation, financial losses, and even injury on the part of the citizen. And more than that, research has shown that negative citizen police encounters harm the citizens in the long term as well, in the form of depressed political participation and eroded views of not only the police but also the state. And that, in turn, decreases the citizens' future behavioral tendencies to cooperate with the police, thereby potentially damaging the ability of the police to carry out their work. So, with all taken into account, Carson is right. Unless one absolutely has to, otherwise we should not get in the way of police officers. So there you go. These are the seven main reasons which I derived mostly from the Joanne and Carson books for why we should all avoid the police like the plague. To quote Carson here. Let me emphasize on this one point again: police officers have a tough job, and to be able to do that job, they are given substantial power by the state. But power can be dangerous, and power can be misused or even abused. So regular law-abiding citizens need to be very careful when interacting with police officers. This video or any of my previous videos dealing with the topic of citizen police encounters is not meant to criticize any particular police officers. We should distinguish between talking about police officers and talking about policing. This video is clearly more about policing in general and not about any particular or specific police officers personally. In fact, to balance things off a little bit, one of my next videos coming up will be based on a very interesting book by Adam Plantinga about the unique frustrations, difficulties, and problems that police officers have to deal with in the conduct of their daily work. That video will be made to recognize how tough police work can be for officers and their families. So stay tuned for my future videos. All right, as always, I invite you to leave your comments and thoughts down below, but please keep them civil and respectful. Thanks so much for watching this Randy Ways Random video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.